going on ladies and gents and welcome to your guide to ride a video series where you guys will learn about the world's public transit systems and how to ride them and commute like an expert and so for today's video we'll be taking a look at viva a rapid bus transit system serving york region in ontario and so i really hope you guys will enjoy this video and I cannot stress this enough, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Because you guys, uh, my views and subscribers, are just what inspire me to make more videos. And so I thank you, ladies and gents, for supporting this channel. Thank you so much. Even during times when I can't upload as frequently as you guys would expect. And so now... Let's get right into the video. The Regional Municipality of York in the Greater Toronto Area is currently home to about 1.2 million people. However, like with many other parts of the GTA, traffic congestions are very much a problem, especially on major highways. And so because of this, Viva is definitely a fast and convenient way to get to wherever you need to go all across York Region, whilst providing convenient connections to other transit systems in North Toronto, Brampton, and the GO Transit. The system first opened in September 2005 and throughout history serves as York Region's express bus service. I am speed. At the same time, it also serves as the spine for its more localized counterpart, York Region Transit. Like, look at the system map. Wow. Just look at how much routes YRT freaking has. And finally, the Viva BRT system has over 100 buses in its fleet roster throughout its history. These buses are either from the Belgian manufacturer Van Hool or from the Canadian manufacturer Nova Bus. Alright, so the types of buses Viva has in its roster are the following. The non-articulated new A330 and the articulated new AG300 bus from Van Hool, and the articulated LFS and LFX buses from Nova Bus. Viva currently has seven bus routes in operation, which travel on major streets like Young Street almost all the time, in order to accommodate the higher density of riders living near these roads. Alright, so the routes are Viva Blue, which starts at Finch Bus Terminal on the south end, or Newmarket Bus Terminal on the north end, and travels on Young Street for pretty much the whole journey. The route has a total of 27 Viva stations, which span across the cities and towns of Vaughan, Richmond Hill, Aurora, and Newmarket. Next, we have Viva Blue A, which is literally the same as Viva Blue, except the fact that it only operates on rush hours, and that it stops at all Viva Blue stations, except for Richmond Hill Center Terminal. Like, come on, Metrolinx! Which, by the way, is the transit agency that manages and operates most of Ontario's public transport systems. That is just pure stupidity in transportation planning right there. Because if Viva Blue A was intended to be a more express version of Viva Blue, why would you only bypass one stop? And why Richmond Hill Center? Like, I totally understand that it takes a long time to board and drop off passengers, but have you forgotten that Richmond Hill Center is a really big and important transit hub for many riders? And so Metrolinx and York Region, might I suggest that you change up the Viva Blue A route so that it only bypasses stops at non-major intersections? Like for example, you'd stop at, say, Elgin Mills where you'd expect a higher density of riders, and you would bypass stops like uh, 19th Gamble where there's fewer demand. And I don't mean to offend you if you live in the area. And only then would Viva Blue A finally make more sense! 
Next, we have Viva Purple, which travels along Highway 7 from Richmond Hill Center to the west, all the way to Markham Stouffville Hospital to the east. However, at Town Center Boulevard, the route splits into two ways. Because the bus can either continue straight onto Highway 7, or turn right onto Town Center Boulevard to reach a few stops before turning back up to Highway 7 to continue the rest of the route. Also, the route currently has 25 stops, and before 2018, it used to terminate at York University instead of Richmond Hill Center. And so because of this change, the York University Viva stop is currently out of service, which is kind of sad to be honest. But anyways, let's move on. Next, we have Viva Pink, which only operates during rush hours and travels from Finch Go Bus Terminal to Unionville Go Station. Here is Viva Orange, which travels from Martin Grove Road along Highway 7 to, of course, Richmond Hill Center. Although back in 2018, the route used to travel down to Downsview Subway Station, no pun intended there. Next, we have Viva Green, which travels from Don Mills Subway Station to McCowan Road. Bruh. Uh, you know you can just make Viva Green go all the way to the hospital, right? And finally, here's Viva Yellow, which is the latest route to open in November 2015. It runs on Davis Drive from Newmarket Terminal to Highway 404 Park and Ride. As time went on, roads in York Region got busier and busier, which made Viva buses more susceptible to getting stuck in massive traffic jams which would delay and affect many commuters. And so to overcome this problem, these new bus-only lanes and stations called rapidways were built as part of many transit improvements in the Viva Next plan. The Viva rapidways are most often built on the middle lanes of major roads like Highway 7. The construction of these rapidways also led to some road improvements, like the addition of new sidewalks bike lanes, designated crosswalks, traffic lights for both cars and transit vehicles, and etc. The stations themselves are also a huge step forward from the regular curbside stops. One reason for this is because of the improved weather protection that these rapidway stations have. Also, I forgot to mention this, but ever since 2010, Viva buses are fitted with these bike racks as part of the bike and bus program. You can now take your bike with you on your trip. How cool is that? Currently, as of December 2020, Viva Rapidways are found in the following sections of Young Street, Highway 7, and Davis Drive. Alright, so those are the current Viva bus routes. But many people like myself think that the system should have even more routes to support the growing population. And so here's a map of what the Viva bus system would look like after all current projects are completed. As you can see, they're going to add quite a bit of new stops to the system, and a new route called Viva Silver, which I am hyped for. Okay guys, we are here at the part where I know many new riders are going to struggle with, which is how to pay to ride the public transit system. And I'm going to help you with this, so please stick around to the end of the video. Now there are quite a few payment methods you can use to ride Viva, the first of which is using exact cash to get a ticket. By the way, you can also use debit and credit cards for this method. Now unlike YRT buses, Viva buses don't have coin slots nor ticket machines in the bus, which means you'll have to go to a one-ride machine at the Viva station to get a ticket. Now once you have purchased this ticket, you're now able to travel freely across the Viva system for up to two hours. And you can also use the single-ride fare to transfer to YRT or the TTC. How great is that? Also I forgot. These Viva Now machines are used to validate your ticket before you board the bus. Finally, single ride fares cost about $4.25.
The second method is to use a monthly pass, which costs anywhere between $70 to $170, which all depends on if it's an adult, youth, senior slash child, or express ticket. Next, there is also a YRT Pay app you can download on your phone to purchase tickets virtually. And finally, the best and most efficient paying method for public transit systems across the GTA, the Presto Card. Now to use a Presto Card to pay for a transit ride, simply tap your card onto a Presto Card reader and money will be deducted off your Presto Card to pay for the fare. And then you're good to go. So guys, please make sure you tap your card before riding because Metrolinx uses the proof of payment concept to make sure all riders have proof that they've paid for the trip, which is why there's transfers and stuff for paper tickets. To add value into your card, simply go to one of these add value machines and fill your Presto card with cash. Guys, don't worry if you get confused with these machines because Metrolinx really needs to put better signage on their stations. Man, I just hope the Presto card will continue to evolve over the coming years. And who knows, maybe one day we'll get to use Presto cards as part of our everyday life to purchase things. Well ladies and gents, and that just about does it for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoy this video and let me know down in the comments how confident you are as a transit rider now. Also, it is now winter break for me, which means video production in this channel is going to boom like crazy the next two weeks. And so make sure you're subscribed so that you won't miss any future videos. And so have a great day guys and I'll see you in the next video. Next stop, Orchard Heights. Please board all buses by the front and exit at the middle or rear doors.